Good morning, and welcome to the week 20 Viva. This week's Viva question is, who was Nero? Although Nero is remembered for playing, reportedly, while Rome burned, and for his intense persecution of Christians, his life was far stranger and much more complex. Was Nero evil personified, just terribly misunderstood, or simply a misrepresented stooge? And the things we're going to look at today are his very dramatic rise due to his mother, his dramatic fall, and his legacy, what he's left behind. So first off, Nero's rise to power, accomplished by his mother's careful planning, helped to bring about a Roman golden age. However, with success having gone to his head, Nero may have been... Blah. Nero may have begun to indulge in increasingly eccentric and dangerous behaviors. Nero was a direct descendant of Augustus Caesar, and the last of the Julio-Claudian dynasty to rule Rome. Nero became emperor after his mother divorced her husband, married her uncle who was the emperor, and then killed him with a dish of poisoned mushrooms. Mm. So Nero was educated by Seneca, and interestingly enough, the first five years of his rule are remembered as a Roman golden age. To quote Trajan, commonly regarded as one of the most successful, if not the most successful emperors of Rome, quote, all other emperors fell behind Nero in his quaequenium, quaequenium, unquote. Nero reduced taxes, increased funding for the poor, helped establish helpful building codes to fight fire, reduced expenditures, and was known for giving extravagant gifts to the people, which made him very popular. This is where the first problems and warning signs began to show. The theatrical aspect of his rule became very important to him, too important. He expressed a love of theater and entered many theater competitions, which, not surprisingly, he won, not because he was talented, in fact, he was quite terrible, but he was the emperor, so, I mean, he had to win. Eventually, these performances became mandatory for everybody to attend, and no one was allowed to leave. And so, even if you were in labor, some people were known to fake labor, but if you actually were in labor, you weren't allowed to leave. So, people gave birth in these auditoriums. People died. People often would sometimes leap from the top, almost two or three stories up, just to escape or fake their own death, just to get out of these performances. His personal life also became quite chaotic. He divorced his first wife after a couple unsuccessful attempts to assassinate her, and then had her executed after they were divorced, then married his girlfriend, who he had been seeing while he was still married, but he kicked her to death a short while later. But then he saw a male servant who he thought looked like his dead wife, and he insisted on treating him as such. Even his mother became kind of concerned with how Nero was acting, so he had her killed. He first tried to have her ceiling collapse down on her with a clever device, but that didn't work. So then he had her go sailing on this boat that was made to come apart if you pull a certain piece out. And so the boat came apart, but she survived and swam to shore, but then he had two hitmen waiting for her there. And she said, okay, do what you need to do. But she asked to be stabbed she asked to be stabbed in the stomach because that was where she gave birth to the monster, and that was her line that she said. Nero was haunted by this decision to kill his mother, and he actually had the Magi, remember we talked about them, he had the Magi try to bring back her ghost from the past so he could apologize. Nero's increasing madness premeditated his downfall, which is what we're going to talk about next. After the remarkable success of his early years, Nero's strange behavior was increasingly matched by his lack of focus on imperial matters. As the empire fell into chaos, his opponents looked for an opportunity to replace him. And he really started having problems around AD 60. The Britons under Boadicea rebelled in AD 60, and Nero considered abandoning that province. When Rome burned in the Great Fire four years later, Nero became even more unpopular when he built his golden house instead of rebuilding sections of Rome. Mm. And in order to stop that 
the rumor that he had started the fire, he blamed the Christians, according to Tacitus, quote, Therefore, to stop the rumor that he had set Rome on fire, he falsely charged with guilt and punished with the most fearful tortures the persons commonly called Christians, unquote. Nero made entertainment out of these Christians. They were burned as torches for garden parties, crucified, and put in the arena or Colosseum. In addition to all of this chaos, a man named Vindex rebelled, but he was defeated a while later. However, the army that had backed him was now backing their own imperial candidate for emperor, named Galba. He had been governor of Spain. Under this new threat, Nero tried to flee to raise his own army, but after his commanders refused to obey him, he returned to Rome to sleep in his own house. But he awoke later that night, and all his guards were gone. And that brings us to our final point. Nero's struggle with, struggle with the Roman aristocracy and his ignominious death, which brought about the end of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, led his legacy to be tarnished intentionally and unintentionally in the following years. Additionally, his persecution of Christians left a permanent mark on his legacy. So we left Nero in his house, and so after he finds that all his guards are gone, he flees to a villa in the countryside, but can't bear can't bring himself to kill, can't bring himself to commit suicide just yet. He's sitting on the couch holding a knife, but he can't kill himself because it's sharp. And he's kind of feeling going sharp, sharp, ooh, sharp, sharp. Anyway, but he eventually hears soldiers coming down the path and he commits suicide. And as he does so, he says, quote, what an artist the world is losing, unquote. But then the soldiers came in and, and they had been coming to tell him that they had not been going to kill him, but that he was going to be put under house arrest and let to live. So, yeah, that's how he died. So now what about his legacy? Because of intense pressure on historians from Nero's successors, accounts of Nero's reign are overwhelmingly negative. However, if Nero was so hated, why was he mourned so greatly? People pay respect to his memory long after his death, and including some rulers, the Parthian king um, asked for his respects to be paid to Nero's grave, and people would often decorate it with flowers. There's also an interesting theory that Nero possibly could have been the Antichrist. The Greek spelling of Nero Caesar transliterated into Hebrew is the numerical equivalent of the number 666, the number of the beast. There are many theories surrounding Nero and his death and revolving around him being the Antichrist. Some of these suggest that Nero would rise from the dead or that he never in fact died. Movements often sprung up around Nero about men claiming to be Nero, so these obscure men would show up and say, hey, I'm actually Nero, and they had no way to prove him wrong because Nero's body was never found, so a bunch of people would follow these guys. And this was quite common. And this was the ne legacy that Nero left behind. So in conclusion, Nero was an incredibly evil and twisted man. Despite his rise to power and his productive first years, he quickly descended into madness, causing his downfall and creating the legacy that we remember today. Thank you.